I feel like every time I I've learned how to parent this child, it gets like a patch and it's a whole different kid pretty much and i'm just like what the fuck do i yes. what do i do with this like two-year-old now you've you figured out how to pick <clears throat> things up and hide them that's not fair i didn't know about this yeah i joked with marty it's like the stability is not unlike our game right now it's like <laughs> you, you walk away you come back there's some new like where, where did you learn that word <laughs> like where, yesterday we had this down it was like, perfect <laughs> friends and welcome to the no clip podcast i'm your host danny o'dwyer joined by game director on doom eternal and papa doom slayer himself hugo martin how you doing hugo hello how are you good that was the first time we did this intro thanks <laughs> <laughs> uh thanks so much for crossing the bay bridge making it all the way over here to talk to us thank you thank you for having me uh, you're in town for a hot minute right yeah, I think we're here for about a day or two. Right. Uh, I wanted to add, my, my first question I wanted to ask, and we'll talk about the game, we'll talk about everything else, is, is this the most stressful part about making a game? Like, you're months away from launch and you're doing press stuff. Well, yeah, because there's so much going on right now. Like, we're, we're you know, it, it's hardening. We're putting mm. the final touches on everything, making sure that everything's okay. And really, all I want to be doing is at the studio yeah. uh, playing the game, you know, just trying to find, comb through every inch of the game. It's extremely long, so that takes a really long time. And to be able to find any last minute bugs or imbalances or different things like that. So especially for a game like Doom, which is really intense and, you know, uh, a really intense action game, you don't want anything to be out of place. Right. So, uh, and things can fall out of place so easily right now. So uh, that's the most stressful thing. Sitting here and talking to you guys uh, about the game and the team, uh, that's that's actually really fun. Hmm. But uh, yeah, the stress note, my phone was blowing up earlier because it's like, it's like, oh my God, this thing, what do you think about this? You know, like, but we have really, really good people hmm. and uh, they're, they're awesome. So they're, they're on it. Has the team changed much since we talked to you back in whatever it was now, <clears throat> three and a half years ago? No, not really. Uh, that's been, it's a good sign. We, we really or, didn't yeah. have a big turnover uh, at all, you know? Um, very, very little, uh, actually. So that was that really showed up. I think it's going to show up on the disc. I mm. think when you play it, you're going to be extremely pleased because we were able to do a lot more, uh, a lot faster and a lot better because we know each other. We're, we're overall just across the board, myself included, the guys were just better at making Doom games, yeah. you know? So, uh, yeah, it was it was super su smooth sailing uh, this time around. I mean, last time we were putting the team together, there was you know like so much stuff going on, uh, you know, a no clip documentaries worth of stuff going on. <laughs> but really, this time we just were able to focus on the game, mm. you know, and um, it it I think it really shows. We just finished uh, our well, we've been doing a series with the folks at Supergiant for a while, um, and one of the things that comes across when we talk to them about all of the games going through them all is that sort of I guess institute knowledge that you retain or maybe it's also just the ability to work better with each other uh, like those relationships if you've gone through like one battle together the second one's kind of easier totally is that a big part of it absolutely uh you get better at arguing with each other right you know you you just try because you have to have arguments it's not like it's you know a big kumbaya circle and we're just cruising <laughs> along like you, you want to be able to have confrontations quickly and easily mm. so you could just move on to a resolution and move on to the next argument but uh, the the uh, and and the longer you've worked together, uh, the easier that is to do. You know, there's no awkwardness, like because a lot of the conversations can be really awkward. You know, like I'm going to say something that probably indirectly insults this mm. person's intelligence, and I feel like I need to say it anyway. Yeah. And then, um, you know, in that instance, maybe the thing that I say is I'm actually completely wrong. And now I feel stupid. But luckily, this person I know respects me and I respect them. So we can move on from that pretty fast. So it's like getting uh, ego out of the completely. equation. Yeah. yeah. So so that's that's huge, you know. And um, I, I can't say enough. Like, I feel like we're all individually getting better and working together better. Uh, our process is, is getting tighter and... Um, yeah, we, we really as a studio are just hitting our, our stride. I think the culture at the studio is amazing across the board, you know, not just like making the games, but like we actually enjoy each other's company. Mm. You know, we, we hang out a lot. And, and that's important to us. I mean, we want we want it to be like a destination location for developers, you know, like um, and I feel like it always was that like to me, Disney, when I was coming up with, I looked at it like the way I looked at Disney, you know, like they were the the nine old men of Disney and they kind of. <laughs> 
invented the genre of animation and then there was a new generation that came in and they passed the mantle off to them and yeah. they had to kind of like uphold the tradition and uh we're, that's kind of how i feel like it's like the the next generation of, of id devs coming in there um <clears throat> so it's important that the culture is just as strong as the games we make so what about the sort of flip side to that coin which is you know the sophomore slump that difficult second album <laughs> Um, and you, was there, what, what, how did you tack Yeah. How did you come into this one? Like, did it feel like a weight off because you proved yourself or did it feel like more weight because now there was an expectation? It did feel like, uh, there was, we trusted each other and ourselves more, you know, it's like, Hey, people like this shit. So like, let's, <laughs> let's, let's, let's do more, you know? Um, and you're able to analyze like what worked and what didn't work, but there was definitely a sophomore slump and it was kind of in like the first year, hmm. um, we threw the pieces back together, added some new AI, some new guns, meat hook, a bunch of abilities. And you think that you're like, dude, he's got a meat hook. We can swing around. We, you know, a lot of the abilities we did first, like dash and different things. And uh, you'd think it would just all fall into place and just feel better. But it didn't. It actually kind of broke the game. And um, it was really boring. And we, but no one really said that or acknowledged it. Like, I, I just, I noticed, I was telling Marty, I'm like, no one's playing the game mm. and I don't want to play the game and you don't want to play the game. And he was like, well, no, no, I do want to play the game. I love doing it. I'm like, no, let's be honest. Like, I'm not making an excuse to go into the office right now so I could play the game on a Saturday. Like and, you, you had that with 2016? Oh yeah. And yeah. right now it's like, I got to go to work, honey. I left my pencil <laughs> at the desk. She's like, you don't use <laughs> pencils. <laughs> like I left nobody, something. Nobody uses pencils. <laughs> yeah. So the, any excuse I can to play, play the game. I mean, yeah. I've, yeah, that's, that's all I want to do. And we, we really had to analyze like what's going on like why isn't it fun again and a part of it is that push forward combat and glory kills weren't going to carry us this time you know right. like that alone was so original in 2016 of just like no regenerating health and like take what you know the the going put kind of pushing the player into the action and and being aggressive and stuff like that the lore just mm. the doom slayer overall all that stuff that people really like self-aware tone and um it was just like old news at that point. Still charming, right. still fun. Yeah, glory kills feel pretty good, but like it wasn't enough. So uh, we really need to also, in addition to that, meat hook dash and every every ability that we gave the player completely broke the game. Mm. Um, in that nothing could touch you. Like you right. could just meat hook around and dash, and the the AI just looked slow because. The race car got faster, but the track was still the same size. And so it made it just too easy. Hmm. So we had to actually make the racetrack or the chessboard and the chess pieces, sorry, um, more sophisticated, a little bit more aggressive, a little bit more challenging to be able to keep up with the new race car that we had built. Right. Um, so that was that was really hard. Um, but we had to do, we had a big, the, uh, the truth is when we showed it at QuakeCon, that was me playing that video of like that really long playthrough. And we showed a shit ton of content. That was 2018, right? Yeah. yeah. It was, you know, there was a lot of content. We showed like a lot of stuff. It was all a lie, basically. Mm -hmm. I was playing in a way that was like meant to make it look cool. And I was weapon switching and doing all these things. Mm -hmm. But the whole time I was, you know, I'm like, the, the game needs to make you play this way. Like, right. I'm going to play this way because this is kind of like a touch point for what we hope to achieve and, and how the game will naturally make you want to play where I'm switching and I'm moving and I'm dodging and you can feel it. You can feel the action and it looks awesome. Because if it looks fun to play an action game, then it probably feels fun to play an action mm -hmm. game. So... But the way I really needed to play was just walk up to everybody and point blank them with a double barrel shotgun. <laughs> and um, we, I had a couple of cuts of that and I'm like, yeah, we, we can't do this. You know, like let's pretend like I'm really under duress and I have to do all these things uh, because ultimately that's the game we want to make. So after that, we, uh, <clears throat> we, we had a milestone internally like vertical chunk and that was very much like it's go time now. Like aside from, you know, vertical slices and different things like that, you will need to get aspects of your game in place and, you know, like a couple levels and systems to prove the, you know, various things from a production perspective that, you know, all, all these really important things. But one of the things we slid up that doesn't normally get, uh, I think, prioritized so early was like, number one thing, this has to be fucking super fun. Like, even for a vertical slice, like every single milestone, Marty, Marty and I called it like, we need to get straight A's. Like every single milestone with our publisher, it needs to be an A, you know, like, so we we really prioritized uh, that it would be uh, look and 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 uh, feel as fun, uh, be fun above anything else. 
which which forced us to really balance the game like for real you know and and really okay how do we get the player to feel challenged how do, where is the fun and uh that's that's a lot when you play the game now that's where it started you know uh and i'm i can't say enough about like being people come in here bragging about their own game Th this game destroys doom 2016 right like you won't be able to play doom 2016 after you play this like it is it is <laughs> really really good and it feels like amazing you know it, it does I'm not, uh, I'm not I'm not a snickery, snickering over here because <laughs> because you're you're bigging your game up. It's reminding me of I interviewed you you and Marty maybe four months before Doom 2016 came out. Yes, and you f I could feel the nerves. Yeah, like you you weren't confident necessarily about it, which was funny, you know, or you know I'm sure you were confident about a lot of it, but you yeah. were also you no, know, we were nervous. Yeah, <laughs> which was it was interesting then when we obviously talked to you six months later because because you you know the the proof was in the pudding at that stage and people yeah. had tasted the pudding and they liked your pudding, so it's it's interesting to hear you this time actually. Oh no, is 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 that as much to do with the game as it does to do with your confidence as a game creator now as well? Yeah, probably both. Also, we tested the crap out of this. I mean, right. we've had it in front of large groups of people and we've gotten a lot of feedback both internally and externally. Um, the the devs can't stop playing it. I mm. can't stop playing it, which is the sign. Like, you know, if you, if you want to play, if the devs are playing your product and they're coming up to you, you know, giving you unsolicited uh, feedback right. that, you know, and it's positive, like, oh my God, dude, this is amazing. Like it, it's, and again, it was not like that, uh, you know, when we, when we first started. So uh, it, it's been a long road, but, but it's been fun for a long time. That was probably the biggest advantage is that we found the fun early enough that we spent years just refining that fun. And right. I think you'll feel that when you pick up the controller, you're going to be, I, God, I wish we could play it right now. Like you, <laughs> I think it, you've got it on a laptop behind I you do. right now. We, we could, could pull it out right now and right I now. could get fired. It'll be good. <laughs> <laughs> this will be the last podcast like, that I do. But uh, no, it, yeah, it's, it's, it's very good. It's, it's really, uh, you're, you're going to be surprised at how I, I tell us everybody, like, mm. you know, I think you don't think this, but the average consumer thinks that doom is just kind of this really polished, mindless card or shooter from right. the nineties. Like, the average consumer. I mean, you, yeah. Giant Bomb, you guys know that it's something else in 2016. But like, we really wanted to make something that was like a combat puzzle worth people's time to solve. We we said that it, at E3, and when people play it, it's funny when they play it, then they they it's like a combat puzzle. Right. I'm like, I know that's what we said. <laughs> and um, honestly, even to a certain degree, uh, marketing was a little bit nervous saying the word puzzle with yeah. Doom, but it's like. I'm fine with there being an overall puzzle to Doom as so long as being aggressive is always the number one solution, you know? Um, but we really wanted to make something that engaged the player uh, constantly from beginning to end. Like, you know, there were some shortcomings in Doom 2016, if we were being honest with ourselves. And um, what would those have been? What were the things that you kind of felt like, ah, second time around would have done this? Oh yeah, so many things, um, and things that we just learned. It's it's. I think you have to ruthlessly evaluate, uh, you know, the art that you make. Mm. You know, and and you can't dive too. You can't believe all the neg the, the the lowest lows or the, or the highest highs. You know, you got to kind of stay in the middle so that way you could keep an objective view of things. Mm. And um, I thought that we got uh, when I looked at some of the reviews and I reread them like throughout development. Mm. Um, some of them were sevens and eights, like giant bond gave us a 10 and you know, you guys really liked it, but like, um, not everybody did. And when you really looked at their feedback and when I would comb through Reddit for every two people that said, you know, three, five people that said they loved it, there'd always be one or two people who said something really opposite. And yeah. it's, it's interesting. It happens with a lot of games where like you and I don't seem to have the same experience with a game. You're like, mm -hmm. what the hell? So, um, when I looked at some of the footage or like even that polygon footage where it's like polygon can't oh, do. Yeah. <laughs> the thing is like, that's just a player playing the game. Mm. Like who's, if that footage doesn't look great, whose fault is that? Is that their fault or our fault? Like mm. how come that person was able to succeed playing that way? Like with one gun missing 80% of the time and the game should have killed that person, mm. you know, to, to corral them into playing it the fun way, the right way. Um, what we kind of noticed was that if you were a skilled FPS player and you picked up Doom 2016, you naturally fell into what we call at the studio like the fun zone, mm. where you're weapon switching and moving and glory killing and managing resources. You're doing all these good things and it feels good. Yeah. If you're not that good at FPS, you there were too many 
unplanned for exploits in the game. Right. Like you could, and and a couple of things where it's like, hmm, if I master this and kind of just do this, I could kind of beat the whole game with a sort of repetitive play pa- style of play. You know, like in, for example, like Super Shotgun mm. was kind of the solution to everything. You know, uh, I'd be lying if I said that was part of the plan. Now. It's fun to weapon switch and use different weapons and do all these things. So good players didn't really play that way, but a lot of people did. And I think the two people on the Reddit forums or the the, the reviewer who gave us like a 7.5, which was kind of like, really? Mm-hmm. You know, like it's because they played that way. So we really went through and we we tried to shore that up to make it, to hold the player accountable, to not let them out of the fun zone. You know, the fun zone is managing resources. It's doing all these different things. It's thinking constantly. It's using the right tool for the job. It's diving into progression. You know, it's 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 uh, what you'll see, shooting weak points of enemies, you know, um, all these different things. And when they don't play that way, we kill them right. pr- pretty much. Like the, the game says, no, you're not going to, like the Mancubus, for example, this time around. The last time you could just walk up to him with the super shotgun, go bang right in his right chest, in the belly. you'd yeah. kill him, you know, which was cool. And if you wanted to, you'd shoot him with the gauss. You, you, it was, it was, it was cool. There was a lot of different ways to kill him, but you didn't have to kill him that way. The, the safest way was to put the double barrel to his chest mm-hmm. or something. This time around, he pounds the ground with like a, a AOE blast, and he does it so fast that like he does not want you near him because we we defined him as like well, well what's we, we really polished the chest pieces like what's mm-hmm. his role? He's an Abrams tank. Can't just fucking walk up to an Abrams tank. Also, if an Abrams tank trains its, you know, its its uh, cannon on mm. me, I should be fucking nervous. You know, like that thing is gonna mess me up. And this time, it really does. Like, you don't want to get into a toe to toe fight with the Mancubus. You want to use your agility. You want to move. You want to use long distance weapons. You want to stun them. You know, like do different things to try to create openings. So if you do like using the super shotgun, then you could go up to him and hit him with the super shotgun. But that feels. What we found is the more that we did that. The engagement levels, which is like the the word we were obsessed with throughout right. development, like engage the player, engage me, I'm bored, I'm not thinking, engage me. We found that the engagement levels just shot like through the roof. You know, you're like, holy cow, like we have this thing called the blood punch. Mm. And it's a, uh, the, the grenade and the blood punch are guaranteed falters. So this is a perfect example of what I'm talking about. It's like last time, see a guy, run up to him. Double barrel shotgun to the chest. Where's the next guy? This time, see the mancubus run up. Boosh! Holy shit, that was half my health. Okay. So uh, hmm, the grenade constantly falters him, which creates this opening. So I would throw the grenade down, slide up to him, and then use the double. And just like that alone, like right. it, it kind of feels more like a dance. You know, like I have to, I can't just throw the right hand. I have to, you know, set it up with a jab first, you know, and then I could do my uppercut once he's stunned. Um, that means you have to teach the player though, right? Like first time of, around, there was a lot of leeway where somebody who's not skilled can kind of get get through it. Whereas it sounds like now you have each one of those encounters, you need to be telling people how yeah. to do it because they'll get overwhelmed otherwise. You will you will be, uh, kind of, we're big on analogies. Uh, we're going to give you a white belt when you start. Okay. And you're right. going to, you're and every like couple of minutes, you're going to get a stripe. Mm. And then like, it kind of comes with the introduction of a heavy. So the, the white belt heavy is the Arachnotron. And you're going to learn stuff like, oh, okay, this is weak points. Every Almost every heavy has like a skill shot or an exploit of some kind that can shortcut the enemy. Hmm. So you'll notice that the Arachnotron's gun turret's like crazy, like just wrecking you the whole time. But then the game's like, you know, you could take out the the uh, the weak point and disable that thing and then he's fucked. Hmm. So... Um, I'm he's screwed. I'm not supposed to curse that much. I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> so so then uh so again it's like we're we're teaching you bit by bit. We're gonna put some stripes on your belt and eventually mm. you'll be ready for your blue belt. And then you you know you'll you'll meet the mancubus. By the time you meet the mancubus, you're about a purple belt. Right. And then at some point near the beginning of the third act of the game, you you will be a black belt where you'll you'll we'll kind of stack you'll you'll learn these skills bit by bit. That's what we spent three years doing. We're not just gonna like hurl this stuff at because we mm. don't we don't want to make a hard game like that's anybody can make a hard game just like you know hit scan enemies and just a ton of damage like you know we're done we we want to give you something to master you know because the the power of fantasy that is earned is is far more satisfying than the one that is just handed to you mm. you know and in a little bit last game we handed a little too much to uh, a lot of players um and I think we lost those players. You know, they they thought it was repetitive. And why would you think that's a great game? Mm. Like Doom's great. I'm like really? I don't know. This super shotgun's great. Yeah, it's really cool. You <laughs> sort of do that for four hours. I'm pretty good. You know, um, this time uh, we we find that like the best games, not just video games, but all things, 
um, there is no footage of people playing basketball the wrong way, but succeeding, right? <laughs> yeah. It's like, if you're a successful basketball team, you protect the basketball, you got a pretty good, you know, got some good shooters, you play good in the post. Well, I don't watch a lot of basketball anymore, <laughs> but like, you know, you, you, you play the game correctly. Yes, mm -hmm. with style and within that, I never worry about like, well, you're going to force the play. Like within that, there's still so much room for creativity, please. Like a million ways that you could, you know, execute on this stuff. But it's not like there's footage of people playing basketball the wrong way and they're winning. Uh, what we find is that the best games are that way. When I see Fortnite players playing well, mm. they're building and they're shooting at the same time. They're really good at that. My son and I play all the time. He fucking crushes me. But like, <laughs> you know, I noticed that. And then when he plays Doom... He doesn't play it the right way. He he his footage looks terrible. It it's boring. It's repetitive. Now when I play and he watches me, it looks amazing. Right. But like that was a problem to fix. And if and we did fix it, and I think that's why the game mm -hmm. is so good. Like our our foot anytime I watch anybody in the pit play, regardless of their skill, they are playing some version of the right way. Right. And it looks good and it feels good. Like they come back. The the bet as a developer is that if I push you into the fun zone, which is kind of this hokey name, but it totally describes mm. like the, and in the fun zone, there's a variety of different skills. Fun layers. <laughs> yeah. Fun ways rooms. to play. Like, well, well, things to do. Like fun zone is like weapon switching, glory killing, doing all, all the things we want you to do. The bet is if I make you do this, you're going to love the Enjoy game. Enjoy yourself. You're yeah. going to love the game. And probably early in development, that's a little bit of a scary bet because people, well, what if I like using one gun the whole time. And I would, I, without trying to be an, an asshole, I'd just be like, then you're not going to like Doom. Mm. Like, that's it. Because I I just don't think that's a good bet to make. Like, th on paper, you think, well, we, sh we should just let people play the way they want to play. Mm. You know, there's really no game that's like that. There's right. Nothing. Like, and people would always throw me like, well, open world games. Like, really? Fallouts, play your own way? It is? Okay. Yes. There is creativity within the way they want to play. The, the fallout is about go make alliances, explore the world, uncover the world, like, and, and, uh, acquire resources. That's how you beat that game. Mm. If you refuse to follow those rules and, and I've done this, like, cause I'm like, I'm good at shooters, dude. I don't need to do this. I don't need to go find cans. I'm just going to go and just murder stuff. Cause right. I just beat doom on nightmare. Like the game's like, nah, mm. like, you know, go, go upgrade that bolt rifle. Cause you're going to get wrecked. So they, 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 again, they funnel you into the fun zone. Cause the bet is exploring the world is fun and they're right you know destiny i can't just like walk off to the to the highest level zones i'm gonna get crushed you know it's it's a trade-off in time ours is a trade-off in skill it's it's you know it's, it's either skill or time you know like in destiny i i uh, you know to play their game the right way is to level up my character which takes a, a ton of time mm. um, which i love doing i love destiny uh for us it's skill uh you you definitely have to like you know, we're betting on these, but I think it's a safe bet because a lot of like, look at Fortnite players, look at multiplayers, you know, uh, Apex. I mean, those are skill-based games and they have pretty good audiences. So it's, yeah. it's kind of a safe bet. Where the, you know, the, the difficulty spectrum is so wide though as well. Uh, we talked at E3 about Bloodborne. I'm a big fan of Bloodborne. You're a fan of Bloodborne. Have you uh, played Sekiro for instance? I, I, Sekiro is one of my favorite games. It is. Okay. Yeah. So like, you know, the, those games demonstrate that it's such a fine line like yeah. difficulty and mastery and all that sort of stuff. So like, you know, presumably, do you think when you're making this game that like Doom is, is it more mainstream than a game like that? Oh, yeah. Yeah. So like, how do you sort of, how do you ma make that apply to, you know, a game like Doom? Lots of discussions about that. And um, so they don't have any difficulty changes. So they pretty much, if we shipped there, uh, ours would be the equivalent of shipping. If we wanted to make a Sekiro, we would remove all the difficulty settings because we have five. So like, right. Within our fun zone, there are like with our difficulty settings, our our whole thing is uh, with each one. You start at the easiest. As you slide it up, you'll be asked to make uh, more decisions per second, and you'll be uh, allowed to make fewer mistakes per second. So these so, aren't like difficulty levels. These are specific things within gameplay. Like yeah, like we pretty much. Well, that's how we kind of tune it. Mm -hmm. So like if I if I'm on the easiest, or I'm on hurt me plenty default, mm -hmm. um, and then I go up. I'll, I will be asked as a player to make more decisions per second. It means that the AI are actually going to throw more heavy shots at me. So like I'll have to do everything I'm doing on the default setting, but I'll have to do it more often and with more skill because mm. it's coming at me faster. And then they hit harder. So if when I screw up, I will be allowed fewer mistakes, uh, you know, uh, and if I go down, I'm, I'm not asked to make as many decisions per second and I can make more mistakes. So 
we, we cat it's a wide net. I mean, it right. is a mainstream game. Like we're not trying to make, you know, secure or anything like that. And I, I fucking love that game. <laughs> um, I think the, so there's that. So for, for us to make that game, it would be to just ship at nightmare pretty right. much. Like so <laughs> okay. I, I would say to be fair, it'd probably be like shipping at like somewhere between ultraviolence and nightmare. Mm. And it's just uncompromising. Now, to be fair, the best version of our game this time is nightmare. Mm. Like I can only play on nightmare now. Like it's, it's because it's, it's, uh, it's like a race car game, and once you become a really good race car driver, right. you only want to drive the fastest car, and you only want to figure out a way to make the car go fast. Like, how do I make this more challenging? You know? how, how do you then tell if it's good at the lower speeds? Actually, I can't tell if it's good at the lower <laughs> speeds. So I stress test the game on Nightmare, but then we'll do studio-wide play tests to catch them all, you know, right, to yeah. make sure that like players of that skill level can succeed on the easiest level. So I think with Sekiro, yeah, it'd be like locking in a difficulty. So that's huge. Hmm. You know, just like, hey, it's too hard, lower it down. Um, we're, we're really confident though. Like, again, our goal is not to make the game, you know, uh, hard for no reason. It's to give you something to master. And like anything else, uh, frustration is a part of that. Mm -hmm. I mean, I, things that I've said so many times throughout testing and development where somebody will be like, Hey, you know, it, it, it becomes, I'm speaking to the devs right now. I really feel like any dev out there is going to relate to this. It's like you do a UR test or something and like. It, it almost kind of becomes like an exercise of like, let's track frustration moments. And that's kind of terrible because like, I, I do jujitsu. I love jujitsu. If, if I had a button that every time I was frustrated while I was rolling and sparring, I'd hit that thing fucking constantly. It'd be like, you just got submitted or, or you totally messed up. Or like, it, are, are you frustrated? It'd be like, yeah, I'm fucking furious. Like, and, but then it quickly becomes in development like, okay, we should take that out. I'm like, right. no, like- the fact that I just lost is motivation for me to go back because I know what I did wrong and I want to get better. Like, you know, ask the team that lost after basketball if they're frustrated. That doesn't mean they want to stop playing basketball. Right. You know, usually it means they want to play more. H the, how do you ensure that though, right? Because how do you ensure that somebody gets frustrated and they don't just put the controller away? This is critical. Um, you're hitting on all the stuff that we did. Like the, this is really top of mind uh, throughout for the last three and a half years. Um you have to feel like the game didn't screw you over, you messed up. You have to know why you messed up, where you messed up, and if that's the case and you know it's on you, then you're highly motivated to go back. Mm. Like, uh, if it's the game that you feel like screwed you, where you were like, what the fuck, mm. dude spawned behind me, hit scan weapons, like what am <laughs> I supposed to do? Uh, you, you won't wanna die, well, I shouldn't say that, but like, less you, chance, you, you'd yeah. be less likely to wanna mm. dive in. Everything about Doom, you are going to know when you die, once you get the hang of it and you can get the hang of it. Like we, the intro level, by the end of intro, you got it, mm. you know, like it's pretty, pretty basic. And now again, we have a lot more to teach you after that, but the basic, the, the big thing to overcome is the resource management. You kind of realize like, holy shit, like they're not fucking around. Like mm. I really have to manage these things. Um, after a while, within an hour or two, you will know, uh, you'll feel your death coming about 10 to 20 seconds before it happens. <laughs> right. Like literally, yeah. not on like total, the chess analogy, but even better now. It's like, you'll move that piece and be like, fuck, mm. like this, I'm gonna die. Right. And the thrill is like, it's not all the time. Like a lot of times you'll dig yourself out of that because you could always take everything you need from the enemy. So like, that was our biggest focus all the time. It was like, did you die? Are you frustrated? Great, but we're not gonna change that unless do you know what you did wrong? Are you motivated to go back? They'd be like, oh yeah, no, totally. Give me the mm -hmm. controller. Like the testers would be like, yeah, yeah, I just, I want to keep playing. Like, you know, and which, which is the sign. And it wasn't always like that. I mean, it, you know, sometimes you, a lot of that is player education balance. Like there's certain things where it's like, and even if you know what to do, you're like, I can't do it. It's too right. hard. So, you know, we weeded that stuff out because Doom is, Doom is mainstream. We say this whole time. I, I tell the team, it's like, Doom is junk food. And we are proud to make junk food. I love junk food. I, I would want to make nothing else, but that doesn't mean it can't be loaded with nutritional content. That mm. doesn't mean it can't be good for you. Like fun on the outside, smart on the inside. Mm. Like that's we something that, you know, you could feel it. Like you, it's really, really engaging. So you're like, thought are you in and out? Are you Wendy's? Are you? <laughs> but I don't know. Uh, I like Burger Street, which is a Texas place. But <laughs> why, you gotta, why you got to do that to us? It's your Richardson local burger. <laughs> we got to take you there. It's really good. <laughs> um, uh, one of the things that comes across with the the new trailer, uh, which just come out um, by the time this is uh, up. Oh wait, I, there was one other Go thing ahead, I, wanted, I wanted to mention about the secure thing. Um, 
a, a big part of their experience also is that they uh, player education um, in it. So, so what we call these frustration points are like they're like bumpers, and the player is like a ping ball. And when they hit the bumpers, we want to make sure that it shoots them right back into the fun zone. So, like for example, running around trying to uh, super shotgun the mancubuses. They're going to go up to him. He's going to kill him. That's a bumper. They they should be frustrated enough. You know, that's mm. like getting your shot blocked. Well, you didn't really, you know, create enough space. You got to create space, hit the arc of your shot a little better. Uh, but on their way in and on their way out, there has to be player education. Like there's a tell, a sound effect. I saw it coming. I knew a second before it. Shit. When I left, like, like the readability of the pose, like, like I know what happened. You know, he, he did his AOE blast. I understand. Um, with secure, I think like, well, I shouldn't say secure, but for us, we really get heavy handed on the player education mm -hmm. stuff because we don't want to make that part of the experience learning that stuff. And as you know, with Sekiro, a lot of the metas in Sekiro are there to be discovered. And that's a huge part of the experience. Mm -hmm. Like it's amazing. But for us, I want to make it as clear as day. There's going to be a, a road sign right before you <laughs> smash into that wall. So, you know, okay, turn three. A little sharp, got it. Mm. You know, uh, we don't want you to to have to kind of spend so much time figuring that stuff out because this the fun of the game is not figuring it out. The fun of the game is mastering it. Right. Yeah. It was one of the things that came up with me and Jeremy were looking at the the new uh, trailer and some of the old gameplay stuff uh, you guys shown was uh, the use of color to sort yeah. of telegraph things. Uh, Huge. There's so much going on at any one time in Doom uh, that. Like I imagine trying to signal something through that noise is really difficult. Is is the two things that seem to pop out to us at least were the the color and audio cues. Is, is yeah. that a lot of what you're doing? Or? Huge. Everything. Like every time you break a weak point, there's this loud ping. Mm -hmm. Like and it, it's a by itself when we first heard the sound, we're like, oh my god, this is terrible. But like <laughs> it's because it's so loud and obnoxious. But uh, in the speed of the game, Doom is like being in a Ferrari going down the road. You know, two hundred miles an hour. Um, if you have something to tell me, don't be subtle. Like, just mm. be super fucking loud. Like, when we have tutorials, we put them in your... Because if I imagine, the, you know, I'm driving the car, it's amazing, I'm doing this, and somebody's like, well, like, Sekiro could be like, let's go to the manual, let's mm. flip, let's find it, let's, you know, we pull over, take a break, like, look, it's just not even... We're not in a race car in Sekiro, it's mm. totally different. You know, in Doom, it's just like, you know, the past, just tell me what you have to tell me, and let's fucking keep going, you know? Like, I have bullets flying at me. Um, so everything in the game... The, the the speed of the combat dictates that everything in the game has to be loud right. and fast and obnoxious kind of so that way you could register it in the speed and it could get the hell out of your way. Mm. You know, that's the thing. I don't want it to be subtle. I want to be like, did I just break a weak point? Great, thanks. Okay, moving on. You had it a bit with the jump points in Doom 2016, the use of green, for instance, yeah. or mantling, right? Yeah, which was something we steered into, you know, like tried to... This is a good example, mm. you know, totally like where every... Just... It's part of that player communication. It's like we don't mind you hitting the frustration points because they're tuned that way to push you back into the fun zone mm. and, and how to play the game in a way that we're betting is really, really fun. But the player education on the way in and out of that's got to be clear. Otherwise, it'll be, otherwise, I'm going to feel like the game is screwing me, mm. you know. And then that thing you said about like they might not want to come back right. and, you know, and hit that A for checkpoint. Uh, one of the things that comes across from the new trailer is uh, the scale of it. I, I remember like Doom 2, Hell on Earth. I never really felt like I was on Earth necessarily. It felt very much like sort of another Doom game. It was fun. It was cool. I enjoyed it, but it, it never scaled up in any sort of way. Uh, uh, which game? Uh, with Doom 2. Uh, Doom 2 see, this is the problem. It's why I called it Doom Eternal, right? <laughs> yeah, yeah. Doom 2, like 1995. Yes, yes. What are you saying? Yeah. Mm -hmm. So I, I feel like uh from I, this trailer was the first time i got a sense of oh no this feels big now this yeah this was it helpful in a way that you're upping the ante in terms of the size of the combat zones and the difficulty of them was it helpful that sort of thematically everything was getting a bit bigger as well yeah i've just tripled down on everything you know like uh fair criticism of the game is it got repetitive in the mm -hmm. third act you know now if you love the combat you you were satisfied because you could just gorge on it in the third act of the game but you only went to mars and hell and you definitely felt like location wise and ai wise mm -hmm. we had run out of tricks um and honestly a little bit of progression like a lot of things kind of ran out in the third act right. um and so that criticism was totally valid uh so everything we did this game is to make sure that every bit of the 20 hour, 20 plus hour experience, it's really like a 23, it could be anywhere from like 23 to near 30 hours. How like fast it. can you get through when you're doing your play testing? 
I mean, because I'm playing it on fucking Nightmare, <laughs> it's it takes some time. But if I'm playing on Hermie Plenty, I could blast her pretty good. But uh, it's it's a healthy twenty plus hours. Like it's huge. you're right. Don't say a number. There'll be a there'll be a headline somewhere. <laughs> yeah. So so uh, like Doom in five hours. <laughs> <laughs> the the uh we needed to make sure that we had different really cool locations that we were taking you to mm. and uh that kind of also drove the story you know and the and the inclusion of the hub which is uh i mean it's a spoiler it's like you're able to uh there's a teleporter it's like his command station and mm. he could easily through a teleporter go to different locations so and that just made it easier for us to take you to really cool dimensions and places and and all this stuff uh and yeah the 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 story uh, sets it, you know, Doom Universe. Like we wanted to, the whole point of the Doom Universe is so that way you have cool places to go and awesome things to see and really cool bad guys to kill, mm. you know. Um, and and the scale of the actual levels themselves is huge. Like, man, some of the levels are an hour and a half. Mm. I mean, some of them might take people an hour and 45 minutes. They're, they're really tremendous, like all of them. Um, the... I, th I think that was born out of just like the abilities that we gave the player. And we really felt like we needed to do more with greater set pieces, uh, more epic locations. You know, this time you're like flying through space. There's this giant hole in Mars and like, you know, debris everywhere. It's totally nonsensical too. Like <laughs> there is a, there's an aspect Doom also, uh, Doom Eternal really embraces uh, just being a video game, mm. which when I say that, it's like we just... Uh, so we 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 own the contrivances of video games. I want a jump head floating out in the middle of space where mm. there for no reason is no gravity uh, or there is gravity <laughs> fucking because, you know, like because it's going to be good and this is what we need to do. Um, and, and we're betting that, again, we can make cooler, more fun, more engaging levels if we just embrace the contrivances of video game design and steer into it like completely. Have you set yourself up for that? Because now the expectation is that this will be a game that will, you know, be ridiculous in its own sort of self-aware way. Completely. Whereas you couldn't have done that pr presumably on Doom 2016 because people would have thought you're playing fast and loose with this, you know, cherished franchise. I thought everything you guys responded to was the self-aware stuff whenever we just said, oh, fuck it. Right. You know, like, I feel like whenever we let our hair down. Demonic invasion and progress, that type of thing. Yeah. That's what everybody yeah. loved. And then um, whenever, there's probably more Doom 3 in Doom 2016 right. than we realized, you know. Um, <laughs> totally. And when, when you look at the original E3 demo, it was like, wow. The Doom 3 one? or I'm the... sorry, the, the Doom 2016 right. E3 demo, yeah. the first one. It's very much like in a horror game. Yeah. Like, you know, there's a lot of Doom 3 in there. And we love Doom 3. I mean, the Hell Knight. So it's, I'm not saying anything negative about Doom mm. 3. But like, we really found our way through development. And based on the feedback that we got from mm. people like yourself, it's like they like when we're... And so do we. Like, I mean, that's why we steered into that stuff. Mm. Like, it just... It was liberating across the board. So, yes, we carried that into level design quite a bit. And it's made... we. We can't just make the skate parks, the arenas, the most compelling part of the game this time. Like mm -hmm. we had to make sure that the incidental combat spaces, the spaces between the arenas was just as compelling, if not more compelling than the actual arenas themselves. We needed to make sure that every action the player took, even outside of killing people, like just traversing the level was engaging. So you'll see that the level challenges the player uh, with skill-based kind of traversals uh, that are just as engaging in some cases as the combat. Mm. Uh, let's talk about some of the story stuff because you kind of again in this new trailer leaned into that a little bit more yeah. in a way that's uh, that's pretty cool. Um, set up, you know, what what are you willing to say? Because obviously you don't want to spoil too much yeah. either. I want to say everything, but I'm not <laughs> I'm not supposed. To. <laughs> uh, does it take off from the the ending of Doom 2016 in a way yeah. that people will expect? Or yeah, um, we skip ahead. Uh, we like to again. Doom is Doom's never going to give you all the pieces, and it's never going to like spell it all out for you mm. because then we'll have lengthy exposition cutscenes and different things. So, <laughs> and we we don't get me wrong, we like uh, like those type of uh, uh, narrative games, mm. but obviously for an action first game for a Lamborghini, you don't want to be bogged down by that stuff. So, uh, the story in Doom Eternal once again requires a lot of player participation. I mean, I think like the so much of the feedback that we got on that stuff was huge. Like if you paid attention to Doom 2016, you read the lore, mm. you you listened to the talking stones, uh, it painted a picture of this ridiculous, you know, totally Saturday morning cartoon universe mm. that we felt really uh, did, did the fans justice. You know, like this is the Doom I want. I, it, we were able to kind of like look at the Doom brand with a, from a 50,000 foot view and take everything about it and make it into a game, not just what actually happened in Doom 1, but right. like Doom 1, Doom 2, Doom 64. I mean, the end of Doom 64, <laughs> he decides to stay in hell. It's like that right. guy's 
freaking badass. And man. a lot of new monsters you have as well. Yeah. Are, you know, a lot of them look like the Doom 64 versions of them. And The yeah. comic rip and tear, you know, what a psychopath mm. he is in the comic. So that's kind of where Doom 2016 was born out of. It was like an homage to the brand overall, mm. every aspect of it. And parts of Doom 3 too, especially. Um, but uh, with Doom, tw and the, the response to that was huge. You know, like people really like that stuff. So we're fleshing out the stuff that they loved. We're build, We're filling out the Doom universe. Uh, we have a lot more uh, ways to tell story this time. I, I mean, we kind of like, you know, we didn't really feel shackled before. We just didn't, again, the team, everything is in place now to just do more. So we're able to give the fans more of what we want to um, while still staying in our place and staying out of their way. Right. Um, it's, it's similar in that like you can kind of engage with it as oh, much yeah. as you want. I mean, yeah. so... There are cool cutscenes that are just like the Mars core one of you walking down a hallway and doing something awesome. And mm -hmm. if you don't want to walk, watch him do something that's kind of funny uh, and, and super badass, just skip it, mm -hmm. you know? Um, and then if you want to dive deeper into the lore and and have some more context for what you've seen and, and the, the references that people make, like, why mm -hmm. does that guy know me? And why does it seem like we have a history together? Well, then there are these fiery pages throughout the world. You could pick those up and then uh, dive into the the nerd book of Doom uh, to your heart's content. <laughs> I think in that book, we've stripped away some of the stuff that I didn't like as much. Like, even for all the stuff that people loved, there was still stuff like some of the codex entries, like the one that's like, if you get attacked by an imp, kiss your ass goodbye. Mm. Okay. There were one or two before that that were, you know, a little more conservative. Yeah. So not everybody, again, not everybody had that experience. It was more about getting what worked to more people. Like they didn't get to the third one no. because they'd read the first and second and I, one. And I would read that in the comments, be like, right. this stuff is in there? Because yeah. if you, a lot of them weren't like that. Mm. So so we we tried to chip away the stuff that wasn't working and steer into the stuff that was, which is... The exact same thing with the gameplay. It, it wasn't to be like, let's make it hard. Like, but it's not, the point is not to make it hard. It's like, let's make it as engaging as it is for the giant bomb gum, uh, mm. giant bomb guys and you. Let's make it like that for everybody because right. we know how they're playing. Like, there is Doom footage of, P there's a uh, uh, Cadenger Sanctum speed run um, by this guy. It has 2.3 million views and it's, it's ridiculous. Like, it's the craziest <laughs> footage I've ever seen. And he's playing the right way. Right. Like, the quote unquote, he's in the fun zone. He's where you want him to be. And then there's footage from people playing it super bad. Mm. So, like, now we wanted to just make it so everybody's footage kind of looks like that. But, and the same thing with the lore. Like, any dive you do into the lore, you're going to hit the good stuff, mm. you know? Or don't dive in at all. Um, the main thing is that you're going to have the way the story is presented is same as last time. Like, and we, we dealt with a lot of this in your artists. Like, I don't know what I'm born in. What is this? Why am I naked? You're not giving me any answers. You know, like I think in some uh, story based games, not all of them. I mean, you might get an answer. You'd have more context. Like we're fine with confusing the player just as in the same way we're fine with frustrating the player. So long as we have something that's worth your time to learn. Um, you're not, you're, it's a, it's a world full of mystery and hopefully intrigue that kind of pulls you into the story, makes you pay attention, makes you want to see the cutscenes, and then makes you want to go into the codex. You know, you're going mm. to want to know like, well, what, you know, who is that guy? He, he talked to me like he knew me, mm. you know, like, well, you know, go pick up some fiery pages and dig into it <laughs> or just murder everything. <laughs> like, you know, cause we, we understand that people don't care. The, the thing we're most proud of is that, uh, the person I am in the story and the person I am in the lore mm. is exactly who I, how I feel and how I want to be when I play the game. Like the gameplay version of Doom Slayer is the same dude in the cinematic cutscene. You know, uh, that kind of frustrates me in games mm. sometimes where like, I'm like this, there's this whole other character in the story and then no one really ever references in the scenes. I'm like, I just murdered like right. thousands of people. Like <laughs> none of you seem to care. Most of them were dressed the same way. Like that's also, no, no one seems to give a shit about that. But like, you know, uh, so it's cool. Like they talk about you like you're this God killing machine. And right. then you're like, yeah, that pretty much am. I just slaughtered yeah. like a city's worth of demons. You know, so we work hard to achieve that. Yeah, your reaction tech from humans has definitely gone up a bunch. You can see <laughs> yeah. in, the, in the gameplay on Phobos. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, uh, I could sit here and talk to you about Doom uh, all, all day, but uh, we have to get you out of here at some stage. Uh, before we do that, I want to ask you, what else did you play in 2019? Like, what were the games that popped to you? We talked about Bloodborne at E3. Sure. You've since played Sekiro. <laughs> what, what other stuff sort of kept you busy this year? Well, I, I can't or say last year, right? I, you know enough about Sekiro. I really enjoyed that game uh, quite a bit. I I really felt like, uh, and again, I, I I it's it's a very very different game. Like 
I love what they do, but you know, we have to do what's best for doom. Right. So like uh, too, too often people are like, Oh, the game is challenging. You're asking me to master something. It's like mm-hmm. bloodborne. It's like, no, that's like apex legends is asking me to master something. Yeah. Fortnite is asking me to master something. Any, it always cracks me up. I'm like, well, what if this is too hard for people? You know, like uh, so, somebody said, they're like, I don't think my kid you know, I'm, w- might be able to play this. I'm like, have you seen your kid play Fortnite? He's like, <laughs> and, and for anybody who thinks that like hard quote unquote games or skill-based games are only reserved for like the Sekiro's, like, dude, if you haven't, I challenge anybody to go log into Fortnite yeah. right now and play it and tell me how your experience is. Go to Siege. How's that going? You know, and honestly, even Spider-Man, I, I really loved Spider-Man when it came out. I'm talk about that game. Um, it was... It was hard. I loved it. Like they held me accountable. They mm. had something to teach me. Like you, you kind of test the bumpers. You know what I mean? Like you, you kind of play through the game and you want to see like, okay, do I really have to play? They want me to play. Cause I don't really want who, like, right. it's, it's this weird relationship. Do players do that? Do you think? Like, I, I do. Cause I'm lazy. I don't right. even do it as a dev. I'm just like, I don't want to like, I'm weird. I'll buy a $60 game and then I don't want to do anything that they're telling me to do <laughs> yeah. until they make me do it. Mm. You know, like it's like, I don't want to upgrade this web slinger right. thing, dude. I don't care. Can I just punch him in the face? Like the animations look good. I'm sure this will work. And I love when a game's like, no, like do it, you know? And Spider-Man killed me a lot in the first hour. And I thought that was the best thing they could do because mm-hmm. they pushed me into their incredible systems. And not unlike Doom, I thought just just moving in an id game, um, we have an amazing team of programmers and designers and all kinds of people who do amazing work and just every action in Doom, that's, that's, that's critical. Like we call it the first five minutes of fun. Mm. Even if I have something for you to master... The, the deal is as soon as you pick up the game, just moving and shooting and pulling the trigger, that's instant fun. Right. You're just like, you know, the Lamborghini, as soon as you walk up to it, man, that looks good. And it starts up, that sounds good. Mm. And then as soon as we drive off, that feels good. Now let's learn how to drive this race car. Right. You know, I'm, I'm sold. Like if it looked like shit and sounded like shit, you'd be like, eh, I don't really want to get into this thing, you know? <laughs> so you pick up Doom and in the first minute, you're going to, you're going to feel it. Um, I feel like that was Spider-Man. Like first time I swung through the city- I was hooked. Mm. I'm like, I will, I will. And it's funny. I read some of the reviews like, well, you know, getting knapsacks. I'm like, I don't care. I can, I would go get lint, pocket lint across <laughs> the city. You know, I just want a web sling, you know, mm. uh, God of War. I really loved God of War cool. too. Awesome game. Uh, just, there were some, and, and another game that like held me accountable. They, mm. they were cool with like, I got my ass kicked in that first hour yeah. and I needed that. Like it made me, res- it's almost like the game makes me respect it, you know? It's similar to Doom 2016 in many ways. Uh, yeah. A reboot of a beloved game that sort of like up the ante in terms of the combat stuff. Yeah. yeah. If, yeah, you, we killed you. If you, if you weren't ready to play push forward combat, that was, that was how that game held you accountable that time. It was because we watched the footage of people hiding or playing back or trying to play defensive. Or I have an idea. I'm going to stand behind this crate. And we would, you know, our, their, that game did a good job of being like, nope, you're going to learn something. Hmm. And, and I, we, I think that's why we did well. But uh, I played Fallen Order, which oh, yeah, was yeah. awesome. Hmm. I loved Fallen you Order. You big Star Wars fan? I am. Hmm. I'm not thrilled at all with the latest Star Wars trilogy, but- uh, Have you watched The Mandalorian? I have watched The Mandalorian. I really like it. Okay. I, I think it's good. I it's the Facebook hype of everything. Like <laughs> nothing is just okay. Nobody yeah. ever writes <laughs> on Facebook like this is good. No, no, it's the, the, the greatest. So like when I went to go watch it, I'm like, okay, I'm ready to have my brain melted. And of course, nothing rarely meets that ex- except for like uh, Breaking Bad. I yeah. feel like you know one of those shows everybody brags about, and then you're like, yeah, it's better than I thought it was. Um, I, I am a big Star Wars fan. I, I thought Rise was fascinating to watch as they completely took Je- last jedi and like swept like we were just <laughs> kidding about all that stuff that was that was really something to watch but i honestly credit to the respawn team i, I have friends mm. who work there and and like i thought it was one of the best star wars stories and mm. experiences i've had uh in a long time and i'm a huge star wars i like the prequels i think they have bad dialogue and i don't really care you know like uh they they introduced me to incredible characters and and uh, took me to awesome places and had amazing fucking Jedi mm-hmm. lightsaber fights. And um that's what I saw in Fallen Order. And I and I really enjoyed that game. Mm-hmm. I thought it was awesome. Played played it all the way through. And I'm playing um right now on the plane I'm getting through Mario Odyssey, which is oh, cool. my son took it over for a while <laughs> and I stole it from his Switch. <laughs> and uh so I've I've been able to jam through that. I love those games. So excellent. Uh yeah that that's that's been really satisfying. you guys are gonna have to fight over Animal Crossing as well in a couple of months. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> Totally. I'm, I'm going to, um, 
what am I going to play next? I'm, I'm actually going to play the Call of Duty next. I've been meaning to it's, do I've that. heard it's real. I haven't played it yet. I, people keep saying it's really good. Oh, yeah. I'm, I'm sure it is. I think everything they do is great. So, like, it's such a polished game, you know, like, the, just the feel of the guns. I, I the, the last, uh, the Blackout uh, hmm. from Black Ops uh, 3. What, what was Blackout in? God, is it three or four? I think it was three. Okay. Or four. I don't know. Um, that was my, uh, that was my Battle Royale. Like right. I'm, yeah, yeah. I'm pretty good at uh, PUBG. Not mm. really. I mean, I'm. I'm That's my go-to too. Go yeah, I'm. I'm good at the banter. Yeah, like that 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 game and alcohol go really. You know, yeah. just always play like twenty know. minutes of uh, yeah, of, yeah. of hiding and and ca collecting stuff, and then you all get killed by one yeah. person. But yeah. during that, you just bust in your friend's shop. So, <laughs> I like PUBG, and and I really enjoyed it. Played a lot of it. <clears throat> I like Fortnite. I'm, mm. My son's way better than I am. Blackout was the one. As soon as I picked Sweet it up, spot. I was like. This That's is going to be the one that I'm awesome at. And <laughs> turn him pro. Man, I played that like crazy. I loved that game. I thought it was, I thought it was amazing. Mm -hmm. it was just everything I wanted, the speed and feel. I always said that I was like, the, if someone could take the polish of a Call of Duty game but put it in PUBG, like, mm -hmm. oh my god! And as soon as I picked it up, I'm like, this is it. This is what I want to play. So I binged on that like pretty hard for a pretty long time. But um, the next is Call of Duty. I'm gonna mm -hmm. I'm gonna play that as soon as I beat Odyssey. No, no, no. What, what am I saying? I want to play Luigi's Mansion. <laughs> I, I love talking it. to you about this because most times <laughs> we interview, we're like, "What games have you playing during development?" They're like, "I haven't played a game in four years." No, I, that's except my own. I can't. It, I have no choice. <laughs> uh, the uh, The worst thing you could be is a game director that stops playing games. Right. It's you, you. That's when I'm. I'll hang it up. You know, it's like a chef that's not eating. You got it. You got to mm. go to different restaurants. You got to see what's going on. I get. I mean, I usually have my iPad out because I'm getting so many ideas every time I, but it's like going to move, everything. Like I'm, mm. I, I kind of have my phone notepad is just a running, just random thoughts about, you know, things that I see or something that I think could work for Doom. Not, not so you're making games yet then? No, never. I, I honestly, I, I used to work in film and I have mm. a lot of friends who work in film. I just think games are where it's at. When I, when I look at the worlds, like, uh, I think what you could do in games now is, it's insane and we're allowed to do so much more like mm. horizon zero dawn they could never make that as a movie they, they would be like you know let's call it thor the <laughs> robot world and you know let's make it like a female thor yeah like they always want to slap a brand on it and they'll they'll handcuff you for days like mm. you know well we can't do this and we can't do that like that is such a just unbridled imaginations let loose and you and i geeked out about that game that's one of yeah. my fucking favorite games Super i love that game um but that that can never be made into a film. That's mm. why I think games are so amazing right now. It's like you could just do anything. Fallen Order was mm. was so good. And granted, they had to you know serve the master. I'm mm. sure they had a, a million meanings. But Cyberpunk, like mm. seriously, like the question is, do I want to watch Blade Runner for two hours or do I want to live in Blade Runner for two hundred hours? <laughs> you know, like there's no question. Mm. And like just the trailer alone. And and honestly, from a from a designer standpoint, because I again I've, I've worked in film, it's like. When you have to design something that's going to be used for 200 hours by a player and be seen from every possible angle and all every ounce of the designs have to be worked out. And as a result, I think you get better designs. Like that car that he gets into mm. in that commercial, it's like someone build that car. Like, But if that was a movie, it'd be like, yeah, you're going to see the car for like total like five minutes. There's going to be smoke and sparks and robots flying around. Like no one's really going to well, get- It's like it. the Blade Runner thing. We'll just, we'll do more smog machines, right? Yeah. yeah. And, and granted, Blade Runner definitely pushes the bar. But mm. in, a, in a lot of cases, you see things- that, I shouldn't say this is not for everything. Mm. I think the Marvel films are- There's plenty of films that are definitely pushing the envelope. Mm. I have a lot of friends who work in Marvel. And they, they are doing some stellar work. I think the design in Marvel films is just spectacular. I just think from an IP perspective, mm. you can do way more in games right now. And I'm really looking forward to it. I'm, it's amazing time to be a gamer. Like mm. Cyberpunk looks amazing. I, I just can't wait to be there. I don't even care what I do in that game. I, just, <laughs> I would deliver the mail in that game, you know? Like I'd be a UPS guy in that game. <laughs> you know, I just want to walk around. <laughs> Awesome. Hugo Martin, thank you so much for coming in and talking to us. Thank uh, you. When is it out? March 30th? 20th. March 20th. Thank and you. And the trailer drops tomorrow, and I really like it. Did you like the trailer? I did like the trailer. It dropped yesterday for somebody who's watching this, uh, if they're watching it. So, oh, yeah, that's right. It's the future, yeah. It is. We yeah. have this new technology. It's called <laughs> recording. It's not live. That's right. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, it's going to be awesome to see what the reaction is to that as well. I, I've uh, been binging on a lot of Doom lore recently, and I think uh, those folks are going to go to town on it as well. So You're going to like, there's a cool. lot of good, there's, 
all of the stuff that you liked, there is a lot more of it. So there you go. There's a promise. <laughs> uh, Hugo, thanks so much for coming in. And uh, yeah, best of luck on the rest of the development. All right. Thank you very much. Bye.